This is my proudest moment being a union member because in all of the 49 years that I've been coming to these conventions, this is the first time we had the moral courage to stand up and say enough is enough. Thank you so very much. When the AFL-CIO 2005 convention passed a resolution to rapidly bring the troops home from Iraq, labor history was made. For the first time, the AFL-CIO stood up against a war. This is the story of how it happened. It begins with an organization called U.S. Labor Against the War. One of the goals of U.S. Labor Against the War, uh, in addition to like building, ending the war and building the opposition to the war, was to open up a vital debate at every level of the labor movement. And we succeeded over these last couple years of having this debate happen in community after community. A major goal of U.S. Law's National Iraq Labor Tour was to get a strong resolution against the war passed at the upcoming AFL-CIO convention. There's three trade union federations, and we had two uh, persons from each of the major trade union federations who uh, came to Washington, D.C., and in Washington, D.C., we had some very significant meetings. We had a congressional briefing, we had press conferences, we had meetings with CWA, we had meetings with the SEIU, we had meetings uh, at the AFL-CIO with uh, John Sweeney, and we had then a public meeting at the AFL-CIO for the community to attend. To me, the most significant part and the most exciting part for us was that the three trade union federations did not all agree with each other. The IFTU, which is the Iraqi Federation of Trade Unions, did not really agree with the Iraqi Workers' Councils, nor with the uh, <coughs> General Oil Employees Union. And after working together on this tour, the most exciting part was we had a wrap-up meeting in uh, my office. It was kind of like, you know, the Paris Peace Talks at times. I mean, we were trying to get a joint declaration. And it was, it was unbelievable because we were struggling over this joint declaration to bring unity amongst these three very different trade union federations and we succeeded in bringing unity. But the biggest stumbling block was over the word secular because part of the trade union movement is very rooted in uh, the Muslim religion and want, did not want to necessarily say having a secular state. Of course, we were talking amongst ourselves and with the Federation of uh, uh, Iraqi Workers' Councils that they wanted a secular state. And you know, we were saying, well, you know, in the interests of democracy, the workplace is the, you know, brings everybody together and where all religions can work together and all peoples of different cultures, whether they be Kurds, whether they be Sunnis, whether they be, you know, the different groups in, in Iraq. We had a discussion of three hours almost to get it together. There are some little aspects uh, were controversial uh, issues such as uh, the secular the secularism. We demanded that and, uh, however, you know, one of the delegates didn't want to put the secularism. They, they found that it's uh, kind of uh, offensive somehow. The two people from the two di dissenting uh, unions, the, the, the secondary people, went off in a room and ten minutes later they came back and we had a damn agreement and the leaders agreed with it. But anyways, we came up together uh, with an, another alternative of that word, and we put together um, an, a, a, a society that uh, doesn't discriminate against the, its own people, and everybody is uh, identified uh, based on his human identity. That was the main issue. So it's a very, very positive agreement, but and it's a very positive development because it opened the doors for us to take now into the trade union <coughs> and say, look, what we must do now is we have a responsibility to fight to end this war. This is the first, very first time uh, to the labor movement in Iraq um, to come together to put a joint statement that all the delegates, they were able to put that statement together in order to build a new uh, and progressive uh, labor movement in Iraq. They really disagree with each other on a bunch of stuff. There are different geographies, different members. 
but they agreed on, on this statement, and this one sentence reflects it. The principal obstacle to peace, stability, and the reconstruction of Iraq is the occupation. The occupation is the problem, not the solution. Iraqi sovereignty and independence must be restored. The occupation must end in all its forms, including military bases and economic domination. As the convention approached, the looming disaffiliations of big internationals like SEIU, the Teamsters, and UFCW created a serious distraction that threatened to push the anti-war issue to the sidelines. So what do you want me to say? Did you have a good meeting? Oh, this is just one of, of several meetings. I mean, the, the real meeting is the convention that starts on Monday. Okay. And uh, we are, uh, you know, we're going through a change process. Yesterday, SEIU made the decision to not participate in today's AFL-CIO convention. Last night, we had a discussion with the leaders of our union. Today, we have made the decision to disaffiliate from the AFL-CIO. Against this backdrop of the split in big labor, U.S. law's problems mounted. The AFL-CIO's Resolutions Committee was promoting a weak version of an anti-war resolution that failed on the critical question of troop withdrawal. And the discussion itself on the war was moved to the last day, when most delegates would have gone home. So here we are at the AFL-CIO. The AFL-CIO, uh, there was uh, 16 resolutions that were submitted to the Federation from Central Labor Councils and state feds all over the country. The resolutions for the most part were, were very similar. They were ba based on the essential U.S. law resolution, in most cases called for an end of the occupation now or immediate withdrawal. In, in, case, in some cases said rapid withdrawal. And then they touched on the broader issues of redirecting our national resources, our economic resources to social needs. We talked about attacks on immigrants and so on. But on the essential issue, it was bring the troops home. At the resolutions committee, uh, there was a substitute resolution that was uh, introduced by the Federation that went through the Executive Council that borrowed language from a bunch of these different resolutions. It also borrowed language from the Joint Declaration of the Iraqis uh, and U.S. law uh, about a whole range of, of, of the implications uh, needed to end the war and the rights for Iraqi trade unionists and so on. On the essential issue of the withdrawal, the resolution said, bring them home as quickly as possible. However, we all know that as possible then means that it's the decision of George Bush and Donald Rumsfeld. And they would say, of course, as soon as possible, we'll do it. But it may be 20 years. We propose that it be substituted with the Philadelphia resolution. The language would say, bring them home rapidly. That one word. As, as quickly as possible should be substituted. So that it says that uh, uh, most importantly, they deserve a commitment from our country's leaders to bring them home rapidly. That's what we want. The problem we have is that I feel very unfairly uh, that while Wednesday is written in the book, in the Constitution, in the description of the agenda and everywhere else, Wednesday is the day for international resolutions. We were told that this resolution, because Wednesday's a busy day, can't come up till Thursday. Surprise, surprise. Okay? Now, that may have been for whatever variety of reasons, but if there's anything that breeds people feeling paranoia, suspicion, and lack of democracy, and all that stuff, it's by the fact that the day when the resolutions are supposed to be discussed, the most important resolution outside of the issues around, you know, uh, of, of the, the diversity and of the split here that's going to come up, will not be able to be de debated on the day when international issues are being debated. If the war in Iraq is not an important enough international issue to be discussed when international issues are being discussed, God forbid, what the hell is? We've lost a day already in this convention. There was no talk of peace for the entire day. It's a crime. We have a day tomorrow. All of these issues that we worked with today interweave with our horrible foreign policy. Anybody that hits the mic on any question tomorrow should find a way to start setting the tone for what Gene is talking about. Because to, to do it from ground zero with no peace talk at all 
And to go from there to changing the, the, the council's resolution can be very difficult. On the second day of the convention, the problem of how to even bring up the subject of the war was solved by Jesse Jackson, who was invited to address the delegates. Honor the soldiers and bring them home. Bring them home. And bring them home with a job when they get home. Jesse Jackson's words provided a strategic opportunity. Yeah, it was like, bring, bring them home. You do that. U.S. law knew that the AFL-CIO leadership could now be persuaded to move the discussion on the anti-war resolution to a prominent place on the agenda. When he spoke this morning and he talked about bring the troops home, bring the troops home, bring the troops home, and got a huge ovation in the House, it became clear to everybody that there was no use opposing any resolution uh, against this insane war. On Tuesday, after Jackson's speech, the AFL-CIO told Union anti-war activists that the resolution on the war, Resolution 53, would be moved up to that afternoon. Things had changed and were now moving quickly. How do we organize it on the floor? You don't have to go far. I already <laughs> just talked okay. to him. <laughs> How do we organize it on the floor? This is the first time. Who goes yeah. where? It was also negotiated with the AFL CIO leadership that their proposed wording, bring the troops home as rapidly as possible, would be dropped for the much stronger, bring the troops home rapidly. This proposed change would be made as a friendly amendment from the floor. As delegates gathered at Chicago's Navy Pier Convention Center, the historic resolution was placed before them. Convention Chairman Gerald McEntee hinted at its significance. Uh, fasten your seat belts, uh, sisters and brothers. I'm asking Leo Gerard to introduce Resolution 53, The War in Iraq. Brother Gerard. Thank you, Brother Chairman. The next resolution, Resolution 53, the war in Iraq, deals with our country's military involvement in Iraq, clearly a difficult and contentious issue. The resolution applauds the courage of our soldiers, insists that they be properly equipped with protective body gear and armored vehicles, and calls for expanded benefits for veterans and those returning from Iraq. It calls for our troops to be brought home as quickly as possible. Quickly as possible. That was the Resolution Committee's original language. And finally, the resolution asserts that the bedrock of any democracy is a free democratic labor movement and calls on Iraqi government to adopt new labor laws that conform to ILO standard. The many resolutions submitted on Iraq clearly reflect very strongly held views from around the country on the war in Iraq. There were 18 different resolutions originally submitted by state labor federations and central labor councils, some of which were combined before the resolutions were finalized. Resolution 53 reflects many months of consideration and discussion by the International Affairs Committee of the AFL-CIO and more recently this week by the Resolutions Committee. Mr. Chairman, the committee recommends Resolution 53 be adopted, and on behalf of the committee, I so move. You, uh, you heard the report of the committee. Do I hear support? I hear support. Chairman McEntee now creates an opening for the presentation of the negotiated amendment. The chair understands that the delegate at Mike 3 is prepared to offer what the Federation believes is a friendly amendment to Resolution 53, and I would like to invite Delegate Fred Mason at Mike 3 to offer such an amendment. Brother? I rise today to offer a friendly amendment. That amendment would change paragraph 2, line 9. It would simply change the words as quickly as possible to rapidly. And I would urge your acceptance of this friendly amendment. The, uh, the chair deems it a friendly amendment. Does he have support? I hear support. All those in favor of the friendly amendment signify by the sign of aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. You are friendly, brother. 
McEntee's words reflect the intense negotiations that have gone on all week with the anti-war activists. It's the green light. Delegate Mike one. Our Central Labor Council, as well as our Vermont State Labor Fed, adopted similar resolutions which called for supporting our troops by bringing our troops home now to their families and loved ones. Now, we took this position only after careful consideration and building unity among the membership and officers of our local unions as well as our community allies. By adopting this resolution, we will join with unions representing millions of union members who have taken a stand for peace and against occupation. Uh, Nancy Wolforth, Office of Professional Employees, International Union. I would just like to call the attention of all the delegates to the workers that are here from Iraq, if they would stand up a minute so we can all applaud them. Um, as these courageous workers face extremely difficult conditions to even be able to get into this country. And I, I'm very proud to say that I've gotten to know many of them as one. I had the opportunity to be a co-convener of U.S. Labor Against the War, which sponsored the tour to bring these Iraqi trade unionists to the United States and to the, them around. If, in fact, you ask the trade unionists of Iraq, who we did, to come and talk to us and tell us honestly what they believed about this war and what they wanted American working people to do. And I'll tell you what they want. They want an end to the U.S. occupation. They want it now, if not yesterday. Because with the occupation there, they cannot really, truly build self-determination and build a truly democratic state. So we, in, in the U.S. law and the U.S. labor movement said, in the U.S. labor against the war said, thank you for telling us that. Now it's our responsibility to get the word out to every single trade union in the country and to make it clear that we must tell George Bush that we are sick and tired of his lies, we are sick and tired of this massive deficit that is built up supporting this war while the schools are going down the drain, while our working people are being laid off, while all of the other things that are happening in this country are happening. Mm -hmm. And to do so, we must mobilize and bring people to a massive demonstration in Washington on September 24th. Thank you very much. Thank you, sister. Delegate Mike Three. Mr. Chairman, brothers and sisters, I rise to support this resolution for many reasons. One, I am a Vietnam veteran. And this war seems very similar to that war. Lies were told to me then, and lies are being told to me now. On behalf of working families, on behalf of our communities, on behalf of our sons and daughters, on behalf of families everywhere, I urge all of you to support this resolution. Delegate Mike for Chairman McEntee, brothers and sisters, my name is David Newby, president of the Wisconsin State AFL-CIO, one of the state federations that submitted uh, resolutions on the war in Iraq to this convention. Both of these resolutions were passed at our convention last year in September. And to be perfectly honest with you, I expected there to be a lot of debate over those resolutions last September. I have never, in my experience within the labor movement, not seen a situation where a resolution on an international affairs issue came before a convention and was not extremely contentious. And as a result, I was really quite surprised that these were not contentious resolutions. One called for an end to the occupation of Iraq, the other called for the restoration of the right of Iraqi workers to organize and form unions. There was almost no opposition. And in fact, my hunch is that there were fewer than 10 out of many hundreds of delegates to that convention that voted against those resolutions. I urge you very strongly to adopt this resolution. I think it is carefully crafted 
and I think it sends a message both to the President and to the American people that we simply must end this war and end this outrage that has been visited upon us by President Bush. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Delegate of Mike Two. Mr. Chairman, my name is Henry Nicholas, a delegate from Ask Me, and I stand before the delegates as one of those patriots. My son have been called back to Iraq four times already, and he's on the list to go back now. He talks of the lack of equipment uh, for the servicemen, but there is a other side of that. Those of our sons and daughters serving in Iraq, when they come home, there is no health care. My son is a nervous wreck right now, but he's on the list to go back. He knows that when he comes back home, there will be no jobs here. We need to say that the sons and daughters of the American families should come home now. I, as a long-time member of this labor movement, am so proud, this is my proudest moment being a union member, because in all of the 49 years that I've been coming to these conventions, this is the first time we had the moral courage to stand up and say enough is enough. Thank you so very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Delegate Mike Three. Very early on, we passed a resolution that said that we will bring the two troops home immediately. We believe, as Jesse Jackson said today, bring the troops home, bring the troops home. We believe that when you say rapidly, that will be the same as immediately, and that is why we are going to support this resolution. And I also want to thank our brothers and sisters in the United States labor against the war for the hard work that they have done across the country to make sure that we are aware and that we are united over this issue. This is our working men and women's issues. Thank you. I urge your support. Delegated mic number one. The motion is made to end the discussion. Please move to close the discussion. A motion has been made to move the previous question closing discussion. All those in favor of closing debate signify by the sign of aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Before you is amended resolution 53. Debate has been closed. We'll vote on the amended resolution. All those in favor signify by the sign of aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it and so ordered. The final resolution did, however, leave unresolved problems. First, despite saying rapidly, for the AFL-CIO officialdom, other language in the resolution could be used to back a phased withdrawal. Second, it includes the notion that the United Nations is vital to building a democratic Iraq, an idea that many in U.S. law and the anti-war movement do not agree with. Third, the resolution fails to call for a repeal of the Patriot Act, something the great majority of the 18 resolutions submitted to the convention by local and state union bodies called for. But it was the first floor debate ever at an AFL-CIO convention on a central foreign policy question, and it was the first time the trade union leadership, under pressure from below, was forced to make a major concession. A previously scheduled Iraq forum for that evening took on a celebratory atmosphere as both rank and filers and top AFL-CIO executive council members attended. I thought it was great. I thought it was. And I think this is even going to be better. We got members from the Iraqi trade union movement here. And how are you? So I think it's been a good thing. Featured at the forum were the Iraqi trade union representatives who witnessed the passing of Resolution 53 earlier. Present were Fala Hussein, Federation of Workers' Councils and Unions in Iraq, Huzan Mahmoud, Federation of Workers' Councils and Unions in Iraq, Hanga Khan, General Union of Workers' Syndicates in Kurdistan, Abrim Hoshaba, General Union of Workers' Syndicates in Kurdistan, 
Khalil Mashadani, General Federation of Trade Unions in the Republic of Iraq, Abdullah Mousin, Iraqi Federation of Trade Unions. We truly believe in democracy that we have to help the workers in Iraq establish free independent trade unions. And we've got to ask them what they need from us. And I think what we did today was very, very important. That we laid out that the leadership of the AFL CIO believes that a cornerstone of the future in Iraq is to make sure that these workers have maximum trade union rights. Cecil Roberts asked the key question. What can we do? as trade unionists in solidarity with the workers in Iraq now, tomorrow, and forevermore to be helpful? That would be my question. Hosan Mahmoud answered that the occupation was the main source of the problems in Iraq. Iraqi unions needed the help of American unions in ending the occupation. It was absolutely a grassroots victory. This was unionist. But it happened thanks to the leadership of people like Bob Muellenkamp. It happened thanks to the leadership of five courageous co-conveners of U.S. labor against the war and thousands of rank and file members who organized, mobilized, helped to put together a tour with a shoestring budget. Today the uh, AFL-CIO, in an overwhelming vote, uh, adopted a uh, strong position uh, condemning the war in Iraq and demanding the, that the withdrawal of the troops. I think it was a historic uh, moment. It was a victory for all the uh, rank-and-file uh, activists and leaders all over the country that have been standing up against the war uh, ever since, uh, you know, the months leading up to the war. And it was really a bottom-up movement uh, of workers and local leaders who stood up for what is right. And I think the crowning moment of the discussion at the AFL-CIO was when Henry Nicholas, who is the uh, uh, president of 1199 AFSME in Pennsylvania, stood up and said he had a son there who had been uh, sent four times and was getting sent back again and was a total nervous wreck. And then Henry, who's been around for a while, said, in all my 45 years uh, in the labor movement, this is my proudest moment. It's the first time that we've ever really stood up and said enough is enough. Uh, fasten your seat belts, uh, sisters and brothers. I'm asking Leo Gerard to introduce Resolution 53, the war in Iraq. Brother Gerard. Thank you, Brother Chairman. The next resolution, Resolution 53, the war in Iraq.